Uppsala University, Swedish, Uppsala Universitet is a research university in Uppsala, Sweden. Founded in 1477, it is the oldest university in Sweden and all of the Nordic countries still in operation. It ranks among the world's 100 best universities in several high-profile international rankings. The university uses Gratiae Veritas Natura as its motto and embraces natural sciences. The university rose to pronounced significance during the rise of Sweden as a great power at the end of the 16th century and was then given a relative financial stability with the large donation of King Gustavus Adolphus in the early 17th century. Uppsala also has an important historical place in Swedish national culture, identity and for the Swedish establishment, in historiography, literature, politics, and music. Many aspects of Swedish academic culture in general, such as the white student cap, originated in Uppsala. It shares some peculiarities, such as the student nation system, with Lund University and the University of Helsinki. Uppsala belongs to the Coimbra Group of European Universities and to the Guild of European Research Intensive Universities. The university has nine faculties distributed over three disciplinary domains. It has about 44,000 registered students and 2,300 doctoral students. It has a teaching staff of roughly 1,800 part-time and full-time out of a total of 6,900 employees. 28% of the 716 professors at the university are women. Of its turnover of 6.6 .6 billion Swedish kroner approximately. 775 million United States dollars in 2016, 29% was spent on education at bachelor's and master's level, while 70% was spent on research and research programs. Architecturally, Uppsala University has traditionally had a strong presence in Fjärdingen, the neighborhood around the cathedral on the western side of the river Firis. Despite some more contemporary building developments further away from the center, Uppsala's historic center continues to be dominated by the presence of the university. Topic: History. Topic: 15th century origins. As with most medieval universities, Uppsala University initially grew out of an ecclesiastical center. The Archbishopric of Uppsala had been one of the most important sees in Sweden proper since Christianity first spread to this region in the 9th century. Uppsala had also long been a hub for regional trade, and had contained settlements dating back into the Deep Middle Ages. As was also the case with most medieval universities, Uppsala had initially been chartered through a papal bull. Uppsala's bull, which granted the university its corporate rights, was issued by Pope Sixtus IV in 1477, and established a number of provisions. Among the most important of these was that the university was officially given the same freedoms and privileges as the University of Bologna. This included the right to establish the four traditional faculties of theology, law, canon law and Roman law, medicine, and philosophy, and to award the bachelor's, master's, licentiate, and doctoral degrees. The Archbishop of Uppsala was also named as the university's chancellor, and was charged with maintaining the rights and privileges of the university and its members. Topic. 16th century, turbulent times The turbulent period of the reformation of King Gustavus Vesa resulted in a drop in the already relatively insignificant number of students in Uppsala, which was seen as a centre of Catholicism and of potential disloyalty to the crown. Swedish students generally travelled to one of the Protestant universities in Germany, especially Wittenberg. There is some evidence of academic studies in Uppsala during the 16th century. The Faculty of Theology is mentioned in a document from 1526. King Eric XIV appointed Laurentius Petri Gothus, later Archbishop, rector of the university in 1566, and his successor and brother John III appointed a number of professors in the period 1569 to 1574. 
At the end of the century the situation had changed, and Uppsala became a bastion of Lutheranism, which Duke Charles, the third of the sons of Gustavus Vesa to eventually become king as Charles IX used to consolidate his power and eventually oust his nephew Sigismund from the throne. The meeting of Uppsala in 1593 established Lutheran orthodoxy in Sweden, and Charles and the Council of State gave new privileges to the university on 1 August of the same year. Theology still had precedence, but in the privileges of 1593, the importance of a university to educate secular servants of the state was also emphasized. Three of the seven professorial chairs which were established were in theology, of the other four, three were in astronomy, physics or general natural sciences and Latin eloquence. A fourth chair was given to Ericus Jacobi Skinnerus, who was also appointed rector, but whose discipline was not mentioned in the charter. Of the professors, several were taken over from the Collegium Regium in Stockholm, which had been functioning for a few years but closed in 1593. An eighth chair, in medicine, was established in 1595 but received no appointee for several years. In 1599 the number of students was approximately 150. In 1600 the first post-Reformation conferment of degrees took place. In the same year, the antiquarian and mystic Johannes Boreas designed and engraved the seal of the university, which is today used as part of the logotype. Topic: 17th century expansion. The medieval university had mainly been a school for theology. The aspirations of the emergent new great power of Sweden demanded a different kind of learning. Sweden both grew through conquests and went through a complete overhaul of its administrative structure. It required a much larger class of civil servants and educators than before. Preparatory schools, gymnasiums, were also founded during this period in various cathedral towns, notably Vasteras the first one in 1623. Beside Uppsala, new universities were founded in more distant parts of the Swedish realm, the University of Dorpat present-day Tartu in Estonia 1632 and the University of Abo in Finland 1640. After the Scanian provinces were taken from Denmark, Lund University was founded in 1666. Instrumental in the reforms of the early 17th century Swedish state was the long dominant Chancellor Axel Oxenstierna, who had spent his own student days in German universities and who for the last years before his death was also Chancellor of the university. King Gustavus Adolphus showed the university a keen interest and increased the professorial chairs from 8 to 13 in 1620, and again to 17 in 1621. In 1624 the king donated for all eternity, all his own inherited personal property in the provinces of Upland and Vastmanland, some 300 farms, mills and other sources of income. The king's former private tutor, Johann Skidda, who was made Chancellor of the University in 1622, donated the Skydian chair in eloquence and government which still exists. The university received a stable structure with its constitution of 1626. The head of the university was to be the chancellor, his deputy was the pro-chancellor, always the archbishop ex officio. The immediate rule was the responsibility of the consistory, to which belonged all the professors of the university, and the rector magnificus, who was elected for a semester at the time. The latter position circulated among the professors, each of whom sometimes held it several times. During the late 16th and early 17th centuries and perhaps even earlier, the university was located to the old chapter house parallel to the south side of the cathedral, later renamed the Academia Carolina. In 1622-1625 a new university building was built east of the cathedral, the so-called Gustavianum, named after the reigning king. In the 1630s, the total number of students were about 1,000. Queen Christina was generous to the university, gave scholarships to Swedish students to study abroad and recruited foreign scholars to Uppsala chairs, among them several from the University of Strasbourg, notably the philologist Johannes Schefferus Professor Skydianus, whose little library and museum building at S. T. Eriks Torg now belongs to the Royal Society of Sciences in Uppsala. 
The Queen, who would eventually declare her abdication in the Great Hall of Uppsala Castle, visited the university on many occasions. In 1652, she was present at an anatomical demonstration arranged at the castle for the young physician Olus Rudbeck. Rudbeck, one of several sons of Johannes Rudbeckius, a former Uppsala professor who became Bishop of Asteras, was sent for a year to the Progressive University of Leiden in the Netherlands. Returning in 1654, he received an assistantship in medicine in 1655, and had already gone to work on a program of improving aspects of the university. He planted the first botanical garden, the one which would eventually be tended by Carl Linnaeus and is kept today as a museum of 18th-century botany under the name Linnaeus Garden. With the patronage of the university chancellor Magnus Gabriel de la Gardi, Rudbeck was made full professor in 1660, was elected rector for two terms, despite his youth, and started a revision of the work of the other professors and a building spree with himself as architect. His most significant remaining architectural work is the Anatomical Theatre, which was added to Gustavianum in the 1660s and crowned with the characteristic cupola for which the building is today known. A gifted scientist, architect and engineer, Rudbeck was the dominant personality of the university in the late 17th century who laid some of the groundwork for Linnaeus and others, but he is perhaps more known today for the pseudo-historical speculations of his Atlantica, which consumed much of his later life. When large parts of Uppsala burned down in 1702, Gustavianum, which contained the university library and its many valuable manuscripts, escaped the fire. Local lore has it that the aging Rudbeck stood on the roof directing the work of fighting the fire. Topic: 18th century, Enlightenment and Mercantilism. The early part of the 18th century was still characterized by the combination of Lutheran orthodoxy and classical philology of the previous century, but eventually a larger emphasis on sciences and practically useful knowledge developed. The innovative mathematician and physicist Samuel Klingenstierna (1698–1765) was made a professor in 1728. The physicist and astronomer Anders Celsius in 1729, and Carl Linnaeus was made professor of medicine with botany in 1741. The university was not immune to the parliamentary struggle between the parties known as the hats and the caps with the former having a preference for hard sciences and practical knowledge. The Hatt government then in power established a chair in economics in 1741 and called Anders Burke as its first incumbent. This was the first professorship in economics outside Germany, and possibly the third in Europe, the first chairs having been established in Halle and Frankfurt in 1727. In 1759, following a donation, another chair in economy was established, the Borgströmian Professorship in Practical Economy, by which was meant the practical application of the natural sciences for economic purposes it eventually developed into a chair for physiological botany. There were very radical attempts at reforms which were never implemented, but important changes took place. University studies had until this time been very informal in their overall organization, with the all-purpose Philosophiae Magister degree being the only one frequently conferred and many never graduating, as there were no degree applicable to their intended area of work and well-connected aristocratic students often not graduating as they did not need to. A few professional degrees for various purposes were introduced in 1749 to 1750, but the radical suggestion of binding students to a single program of study adapted to a particular profession was never implemented. The reforms of this era have been compared to those of the 1960s and 1970s Sten Lindroth. Although it took some time after the fire of 1702, Uppsala Cathedral and Uppsala Castle were both eventually restored, both by Karl Harlman, perhaps the most important Swedish architect of the era. He also modified Gustavianum, designed a new conservatory for Linnaeus Botanical Garden and built the new consistory house, which was to be the administrative core of the university. Another magnificent royal donation was that of the large Baroque garden of the castle, given by Gustavus III to the university when it was obvious that the old botanical garden was insufficient. A large new conservatory was built by the architect Louis-Jean Dupré. 
Additional grounds adjacent to the Baroque garden has since been added. The old garden of Rudbeck and Linnaeus was largely left to decay, but was reconstructed in the years between 1918 and 1923 according to the specifications of Linnaeus in his work Hortus Upsaliensis from 1745. Topic. Women at the university The issue of women's right to study at universities was raised during the very last session of the Estate Parliament in 1865 in a motion from Carl Johann Svensson, a member of the farmer's estate. The reception was mixed, with the most negative views coming from the clergy. In the following years the issue continued to be debated at the universities. In 1870, it was decided to let women take the secondary school examination, student examine, that gave the right to entry at universities and the right to study and complete degrees at the faculties of medicine in Uppsala and Lund and at the Caroline Institute of Medicine and Surgery in Stockholm. A common view was that the female sensitivity and compassion would make women capable of working as physicians, but their right to work was still restricted to private practice. Women's rights to higher education was extended in 1873, when all degrees except those in the faculties of theology and the licentiate degree in law were made accessible for women. The first female student in Sweden was Betty Peterson 1838 who had already worked as a private tutor for several years when she took student examine in 1871. With a royal dispensation, she was allowed to enter university in Uppsala in 1872, the year before studies at the philosophical faculty would actually be made generally available to women. She studied modern European languages and was the first woman in Sweden to complete an academic degree when she finished a fill, canned, in 1875. She became the first woman to be employed as a teacher in a public school for boys. The first woman in Sweden to complete a doctoral degree was Ellen Fries, 1855-1900, who entered Uppsala University in 1877 and became a PhD in history in 1883. Other female students of this period includes Lydia Wallström (1869–1954), who later became a noted educator, activist, and writer on women's emancipation and suffrage. Defending a dissertation in history in 1900, she became the second woman to finish a doctorate at a Swedish university. In 1892, she founded the Uppsala Women's Student Association, who set up specs performances and other things enjoyed by male students but from which the women were excluded at the time. The members of the association were the first women to wear the student caps in public, an important sign of their status. Elsa Eschelson was the first Swedish woman to finish a law degree, and the first to become a docent but was not permitted to even hold the position of acting professor despite being formally qualified for this in everything but her sex. After years of conflicts with the professor of civil law A. O. Winroth, who wrote the paper on Om Tjenstajans Forajandet, and with the university board, she died in 1911 from an overdose of sleeping powder. According to the Constitution of 1809, only native Swedish men could be appointed to higher civil servant positions, including professorships. This was changed in 1925, and the first woman to hold a professorial chair at Uppsala University was Gerd Enequist, appointed professor of human geography in 1949. Hildegard Björk who studied in the university became the first Swedish woman to receive an academic degree. Topic. Administration and organization Topic. Central administration The governing board of the university is the consistory, with representatives of the faculties as well as members representing the students and non-academic employees three professors and three students, and ten university outsiders appointed by the Swedish government. All these members in the consistory have the right to vote. The unions active at the university also have three representatives in the consistory. These members have the right to speak but not any right to vote. 
Since the last reorganization in 1999 the university has a separate body called the Academic Senate, which is a wider, but mostly advisory group representing teaching staff, researchers and students. The executive head of the university is the Rector Magnificus, whose deputy is the Prorector. There are also since 1999 three vice-rectors, each heading one of the three disciplinary domains. Arts and Social Sciences, Medicine and Pharmacy, and Science and Technology into which the nine faculties are divided. Each faculty has a faculty board and is headed by a dean decanus. The position of dean is held part-time by a professor of the faculty. Topic. Faculties Through division of faculties and the addition of a previously independent school of pharmacy as a new faculty, the traditional four-faculty organization of European universities has evolved into the present nine faculties. The disciplinary domain of arts and social sciences includes the Faculty of Arts, the Faculty of Social Sciences, the Faculty of Languages, the Faculty of Theology, the Faculty of Law and the Faculty of Educational Sciences formerly the Department of Education, that was raised to the status of a faculty in its own right in 2002. The disciplinary domain of medicine and pharmacy includes the Faculty of Medicine and the Faculty of Pharmacy. The Faculty of Pharmacy was originally an independent Royal Institute in Stockholm, which was moved to Uppsala and incorporated with the university between 1968 and 1972. The disciplinary domain of science and technology includes only the Faculty of Science and Technology. The engineering programs have from 1982 been marketed as the Uppsala School of Engineering Uppsala Techniska Hogskola. This has however never been a separate institution, but only a unit within the Faculty of Science and Technology and use of the term has been phased out after the Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Sciences was renamed the Faculty of Sciences and Technology in the 1990s. Uppsala University also hosts the Forum for South Asia Studies, a collaborative academic effort by its six faculties, Theology, Law, History and Philosophy, Social Sciences, Languages, and Educational Sciences. The forum aims facilitate and promote research and education related to the South Asian countries, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bangladesh, the Maldives and Afghanistan, on the national and international level, with Ferdinando Sardella, Faculty of Theology, serving as the forum's director. Topic. Faculty of Law The Faculty of Law is the oldest one in the Nordic countries and existed before 1477 when the University of Uppsala was founded. The activities of the faculty include a wide range of research areas and specializations. This faculty has one department, the Department of Law. Topic. University Library. The university library holds about 5.25 million volumes of books and periodicals 131,293 shelf meters, 61,959 manuscripts, 7,133 music prints, and 345,734 maps and other graphic documents. The holdings of the collection of manuscripts and music includes, among other things, the Gothic Bible manuscript Codex Argentius. The most widely recognized building of the university library is Carolina Rediviva, the Revived Carolina, thus named in reference to Academia Carolina see illustration, which held the university library from the earliest times until 1691, when it was moved to the upper floor of Gustavianum, where it miraculously survived the Great City Fire of 1702. In the mid-18th century, there were plans to move it back to the Academia Carolina or a new building on the same spot. The building was demolished in 1778 to make place for a new library, but this was never built and the area next to the cathedral where it stood is today a lawn. The present Carolina Rediviva was built in a different place and completed in 1841. The present university library system comprises 19 branches, including the one in the Carolina building. Topic. 
Topic: <laughs> Uppsala University Hospital. The Uppsala Academic Hospital or Akademiska Shukuset, which functions as a teaching hospital for the Faculty of Medicine and the Nursing School, is run by the Uppsala County Council in cooperation with the university. As of 2003, the hospital had 7,719 employees and as of 2004 1,079 places for patients. The university hospital is actually older than the university, as it goes back to the earliest hospital, founded in Uppsala in 1302, much later merged with the university clinic. This was used for 400 years until the Great Fire of 1702 which destroyed large parts of central Uppsala. A new hospital, which later became the Uppsala County Hospital, was built in its place, but was moved out of the town in 1811. The first clinic with the specific intention to facilitate the practical education of medical students was the Nosocomium Academicum, founded in 1708 and located to the Oxenstierna Palace at Ritterdergat beside the cathedral see illustration above. The building the former residence of the president of the Royal Chancellery Bengt Gabrielsen Oxenstierna today houses the Faculty of Law. The present Akademiska Shukuset was founded in 1850 as an organizational merger of the county hospital and the university clinic, and a new building was inaugurated in 1867 on the hill below Uppsala Castle to the southeast. From this building, which is still in use, the present hospital complex has grown. Topic: The Svedberg Laboratory. The Svedberg Laboratory named after Theodor the Svedberg, is a university facility that contains the Gustav Werner cyclotron, which is used for research as well as for proton therapy for the treatment of cancer with close cooperation with the oncology clinic at Uppsala University Hospital. Such an accelerator and its gantries costs between $60 million and $100 million, and makes Uppsala University Hospital one of the approximately 40 centers in the world to provide such cancer treatment. Campus The buildings and locations where the university has activities or which are significantly connected to its history are listed below. Some of the historic buildings in central Uppsala have had to be retired, as their protected status has made it impossible to make modifications necessary to meet requirements to adjust to the needs for students with disabilities. University Park and Cathedral Area Gustavianum The Old Consistory Building The University Hall The Eckermann House The Dean's House or Julienskold Palace Skytianum The Oxenstierna House Juridicum, Faculty of Law Regnellianum Carolina Redeviva West of Central Uppsala English Park Campus, Center for the Humanities including the Center for Language Studies Center for Evolutionary Biology EBC, including the Museum of Evolution University of Uppsala Botanical Garden Segerstadthuset, Administrative Building Blasenhus, Center for Pedagogy, Didactics, Educational Studies and Psychology Other locations in wider central Uppsala Theatrum Oeconomicum and Gamla Torget The Old Forum the Observatory Park with the Old Observatory Center for Economic Sciences Economicum. The Linnaeus Garden Anders Celsius's former house and observatory South of Central Uppsala Uppsala University Hospital The Rudbeck Laboratory Uppsala Biomedical Center BMC. Geo Center Information Technology Center ITC Polax The Angstrom Laboratory north of Central Uppsala Teacher training outside of Uppsala Campus Gotland Topic Economicum Economicum is a building that is part of Uppsala University the building, designed by Swedish modernist architect Peter Selsing, was completed in 1976, and housed departments for languages, humanities, and social sciences. 
Since the early 2000s, Economicum is a multidisciplinary center specialized in economics and financial studies, information science, and human geography. It has approximately 2,500 students and 500 faculty and staff members, a library, KPH print shop, a restaurant, and several students' associations. Topic. Student life Topic. Nations and Student Union Up until June 2010 students at Uppsala University were obliged to become members of one of the nations, corporations of students traditionally according to province of origin not strictly upheld now, for practical reasons. The system of dividing students into nations according to origin can ultimately be traced back to the nations at the medieval University of Paris and other early medieval universities, but the Uppsala nations appear only about 1630-1640, most likely under influence of the Landsmannschaften which existed at some of the German universities visited by Swedish students. In Sweden, nations exist only in Uppsala and Lund. The nations were originally seen as subversive organizations promoting less virtuous aspects of student life, but in 1663 the consistory made membership in a nation legal, each nation being placed under the inspectorship of a professor. The current 13 nations all have a history stretching back to the early to mid-17th century, but some of them are the result of mergers of older, smaller nations that took place in the early 19th century to facilitate the financing of building projects. The nations at Uppsala University are Since the 1960s there is a 14th nation, the Scanelandens nation referring to the Scanian lands which has no membership fee and exists as a legal device to get around the compulsory membership for students who prefer not to become affiliated with the traditional nations. The Uppsala Student Union was founded in 1849 as a corporation representing all students except those attending the Faculty of Pharmacy, irrespective of nation. The students at the Faculty of Pharmacy were also exempt from the compulsory membership in the nations, but most pharmacy students belonged to one. However they were obliged to take up membership in the Pharmaceutical Association of Uppsala Students, an organization having the same role as the nations and the student union at the rest of the university. The compulsory membership in a student union was abolished 1 July 2010, however, the unions will still be the representing organizations in the university boards and committees. The status as a student union will be decided upon by the university board for periods of three years at a time. In a decision by the University Board February 20, 2013, there will be four student unions at the university during July 2013 to June 2016, the Uppsala Student Union for students at the faculties of Art, Social Sciences, Languages, Theology, Law, Educational Sciences and Medicine, the Pharmaceutical Association of Uppsala Students for students at the Faculty of Pharmacy, the Uppsala Union of Engineering and Science Students at the Faculty of Science and Technology technology, and RINDI, the Union for Students at Campus Gotland. Topic. Music The university's Royal Academic Orchestra was founded in 1627. Its main purpose is to play at academic ceremonies, but holds concerts on other occasions as well. Its leader has the title of Director Musics's. The position has been held by composers such as Wilhelm Stenhammer, Hugo Alvin and Lars Erik Larsson. Affiliated with the university are three choirs, the Mixed Uppsala University Choir Almana Sangen, founded in 1830, the Male Choir Orfe Dranger, founded in 1853, and the Academy Chamber Choir of Uppsala, founded in 1957. A number of other choirs and orchestras are affiliated with the nations. An important name in the recent history of the choirs is Eric Eriksson, who was conductor of both Orfe Dranger and the Chamber Choir. In honor of Eriksson, the Forningsperbanken endowed the Eric Eriksson Chair in Choral Directing, and the Uppsala University Choral Center was inaugurated in 2000. The center arranges courses in Choral Directing. 1. Topic. Housing crisis. 
Like many cities there is a shortage of housing in Uppsala, a problem which has existed for many years. Both native Swedes and foreign students are finding it difficult to find accommodation when first enrolling into the university. This problem is however not as bad as it was with several major housing construction projects having been completed after 2010. There has never been a custom in Sweden for the universities to arrange housing for students, in fact universities are not allowed by law to own housing. Students are expected to arrange their own living accommodations on the private market. To make it easier for students to find moderately priced housing, special student rooms and student apartments have been built by the student nations and student unions. However, the student housing is insufficient to accommodate all students. About 40,000 students are eligible to live in the 11,000 available rooms and apartments. Because of the low rent in these apartments and the general lack of housing in Uppsala the student apartments are highly attractive and many try to hold on to the contracts as long as possible even after graduating. <laughs> <laughs> housing One of the most popular housing accommodations for the students are Flogsta, Kantersgaden, Studentstaden, Studentvagen, Klostergaden, Rackerbergsgaden and many more. Flogsta is one of the biggest and most popular housing choice for international students. <laughs> <laughs> Athletics Sports play a very small role in the life of the university, compared to British and especially U.S. universities, but have existed in various forms since the early 17th century. Uppsala University is more noted for its musical and choral traditions. Both have partial roots in the 17th century institution of extracurricular exercises for students from the nobility. Topic. The Exercitier To ease the recruitment of students from the nobility, the university started in the 1630s to offer training in a number of exercitier or exercises, Swedish, exercitier deemed necessary for the well-rounded education of a young nobleman, riding, fencing, dance, drawing and modern languages such as French and Italian. The initiative came from Chancellor Axel Oxenstierna, who saw the value in a well-educated class of civil servants and the danger to his own class if its members would fall behind in academic education compared to those students who came from the lower estates. An exercise yard, built for the riding and fencing exercises, was demolished in the late 19th century to give place to the new university hall. The modern languages were made part of the regular academic curriculum in the 19th century. The surviving exercises include fencing, arranged in collaboration with Uppsala Facting, a private fencing club. Fencing master as of 2005 is Igor Sakinjov, captain of the Swedish Fencing Federation. Gymnastics and sports, located to the Art Nouveau University Gymnastics Hall, colloquially known as Svetis from the Swedish word for sweat. Riding, arranged by the equestrian department of the university, which has its own stables. Leaders of the activities are the academy stable master and the inspector equitanti. Music, leader of the musical activities is the director Musixes, who is the conductor of the Royal Academic Orchestra. The current director Musixes is Professor Stefan Karp. Drawing, the university appoints an established artist as drawing master. Free weekly croquis and other lessons are offered in the southern tower of Uppsala Castle. Topic. Other sports Besides the Exercitier, other sports have had a presence in Uppsala student life. The Uppsala Simsalskap, Uppsala Swimming Society, which is the oldest swimming club in the world, was founded in 1796 by the mathematician John Svanberg. It had no formal connection to the university, but all its earliest members came from academic life. Svanberg even arranged a mock graduation ceremony, a simpromotion, in parody of the university ceremonies, where those who had graduated from its swimming training were awarded degrees of master magister and bachelor candidate. 
These degrees stuck, and Swedish swimming schools still use these degrees for different levels of swimming skills. An attempt was made in the 1870s to introduce academic rowing after the Oxbridge model. The Stockholm nation acquired a rowing boat in 1877, soon followed by the Gothenburg nation, and for a number of years rowing competitions were held between teams from the two nations. Although rowing never got the strong position it has at the English universities, an annual Uppsala Lund regatta has been arranged since 1992, between rowing teams from Uppsala and Lund University. The race is held on the Firis River in Uppsala on even years, and on a river in the vicinity of Lund on odd years. Each year there is at least one full eight crew with Cox competing, with both men's and women's teams present. With the recent victory for Uppsala in 2005, the score stands 24-23 in Uppsala's favour. Rankings Uppsala University places well in many rankings. For over 10 years, it has been ranked among the 80 best universities in the world the academic ranking of world universities. Topic. Notable people Uppsala University is associated with eight Nobel Prize laureates, and numerous royalty, academics and public figures. As the dominant academic institution in Sweden for several centuries, Uppsala University has educated a large proportion of Swedish politicians and civil servants ever since its first period of expansion in the early part of the 17th century. These range from Chancellor of the Realm Rikskanceler Johan Oxenstierna (1611–1657) and Lord Chief Justice Rikstrats Magnus Gabriel de la Gardie (1622–1686) to the first Social Democratic Prime Minister of Sweden, Hallmar Branting (1860–1925). Other alumni are Dag Hammarskjöld (1905–1961), United Nations Secretary General who was posthumously awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1961, and the Swedish diplomat Hans Blix (born 1928), who was head of the International Atomic Energy Agency (1981–1997), of the UNMOVIC 2000–2003, and previously Swedish Minister of Foreign Affairs (1978–1979). Hammarskjöld and Blix both graduated from the Uppsala Faculty of Law, as did the Swedish Minister of Foreign Affairs Anna Lind, who was assassinated in 2003. Most Swedish clergymen, including most bishops and archbishops, have been educated at the university, including, in more recent times, Nathan Soderblom (1866–1931), professor of the history of religions in the Faculty of Theology, later Archbishop of Uppsala, and awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1930 for his work as leader of the ecumenical movement. The university became prominent in the sciences in the 18th century with names such as the physician and botanist Carl Linnaeus (1707–1778), the father of biological and mineralogical taxonomy, and his numerous important pupils, the physicist and astronomer Anders Celsius (1701–1744), inventor of the Celsius scale, the predecessor of the Celsius scale, and the chemist Torbern Bergman (1735–1784). Another scientist from this era is Emanuel Swedenborg (1688–1772), better remembered today as a religious mystic. Several of the elements were discovered by Uppsala scientists during this period or later. Johns Jakob Berzelius, one of the fathers of modern chemistry, received his doctorate in medicine in Uppsala in 1804, but later moved to Stockholm. Uppsala scientists of the 19th century include the physicist Anders Jonas Angström (1814–1874). During the 20th century, several Nobel laureates in the sciences have been Uppsala alumni or professors at the university. Many well-known Swedish writers have studied in Uppsala. Georg Stirnjelm (1598–1672) is often called the father of Swedish poetry. The poet and song composer Carl Michael Bellman (1740–1795), without doubt the best loved and best remembered of Swedish 18th-century poets, matriculated but left the university after less than a year. 
The writer, historian and composer Eric Gustav Geyer (1783–1847), professor of history, and the poet per Daniel Amadeus Atterbaum (1790–1855), professor of poetry, were principal figures of early 19th-century Swedish Romanticism. The less than happy experiences of the Uppsala student life of novelist and playwright August Strindberg (1849–1912) resulted in his Fran Fjärdingen Oxvartbacken (1877), a collection of short stories set in Uppsala. From Fjärdingen and Svartbacken, the title refers to two districts in Uppsala. Other Uppsala alumni are the poet Eric Axel Karfelt (1864–1931), who refused the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1918, but received it posthumously in 1931; the novelist and playwright Par Lagerkvist (1891–1974), Nobel laureate in 1951; and the poet and novelist Karen Boye (1900–1941), for whom one branch of the university library has been named. The communist leader Ture Nerman (1886–1969) wrote a novel called *Olympian*, based on his experience as a student in Uppsala. Niklas Zenström, co-founder of Kazaa and Skype, is also a former student at Uppsala University. On the 15th of August 2008, Zenström donated 15 million Swedish kroner to Uppsala University for climate research. The late Jan Stenbeck, a Nordic media mogul who controlled Modern Times Group, was also an alumnus of Uppsala University. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> International Cooperation. Uppsala University has signed student exchange agreements with about 400 universities across all parts of the world. It takes part in the Erasmus program and the NordPlus program. It also benefits from its membership of the Coimbra Group of Universities. In May 2010 Uppsala joined the Matariki Network of Universities MNU together with Dartmouth College USA, Durham University UK, Queen's University Canada, University of Otago New Zealand, University of Tübingen Germany, and University of Western Australia Australia. Topic. In fiction and popular culture Along with Lund, Uppsala is the historic and traditional centre of Swedish academic life, making it a popular object of reference in Swedish literature, art, and film. Specifically, Uppsala University has appeared notably in Man Samha Tar Kaviner or The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Stieg Larsson. The Norwegian pop singer Kirsti Sparbo dedicated one of her biggest successes to Uppsala University, publishing in 1969 the song, Ein Student aus Uppsala. The song, originally written in German, lasted 14 weeks in the German charts. Uppsala University appears as a research center in the strategy game Empire, Total War. Uppsala University appears in the novel S by Doug Dorst and J.J. Abrams. The fictional author V. M. Straka of Ship of Theseus sends Mr. Gran a confidential letter on Uppsala Universitet letterhead and stamps his signature with Straka Uppsala Archive, included as an insert to the book. See also List of medieval universities List of universities in Sweden Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences in Uppsala Johannelands Theologiska Hogskola in Uppsala Flogsta, Student Residential Area in Uppsala Category, Uppsala University Alumni S Asterisk, a collaboration between seven universities and the Karolinska Institute for Training in Bioinformatics and Genomics <laughs>